this is not a shooting board. This is a shooting board. While I suppose you could use it for target practice, its real purpose is to help join tops and backs. There are many shooting board designs available, and some of them are quite elaborate. This one was actually designed by one of my students. It is just a couple of pieces of three-quarter inch plywood stacked on top of each other and attached with some screws. It has a small piece attached underneath it so that it can bump up against the edge of a workbench to help hold it in place while using it. It has a block of wood on top of it to help support the workpiece while joining the edge. The block is removable and can be placed closer to the beginning of the board so that you can work on shorter pieces more comfortably. Here's how to use this jig. Start by placing the top or back pieces on the jig. Make sure the edges you want to join are facing the side where the plane goes. You can do one piece at a time or both pieces together. If the edge has a convex shape like I'm showing here, your plane will tend to follow the shape and plane it into the edge. Of course I'm exaggerating the shape for illustration purposes. I prefer to plane the convex part off and perhaps even make it a little bit concave before planing the entire edge. I tend to get better results this way. You could also just use a power joiner to true up the edges before using the shooting board. With the top or back placed on the shooting board, use your plane to make a full pass along the edge until the entire edge has been planed. Here I am using a low angle plane made for joining edges, but you could use a regular jack plane or bench plane. A block plane is a bit too small for this operation. After running the plane along the edge of both pieces, place them together either on a flat surface or up to a light and check for gap along the joint. Here I noticed there was a slight gap in the middle of the joint and the ends were tight. So I placed the pieces back on the shooting board and planed a micro skosh off each end and then took a full pass again. This seemed to work, but I would like to get the joint as tight as I possibly can. Here's a little trick for that. Place a piece of sandpaper against the sole of your plane and lightly sand the edges to be joined. This will get you that perfect fit with no gaps. On a good day, a few passes with my plane and then perhaps a bit of sanding using the plane as a flat edge and my top or back joint is perfect and ready to be glued together. However, occasionally I feel like I am chasing the gap up and down the edge. If this happens, take a deep breath and continue working at it until the joint is perfect. In the end, you will be glad you took the time to get it right. Once you have achieved that perfect joint on your top or back, then the pieces need to be glued together. There are many ways to do this. Here's a quick way that I use. I take a piece of plywood or MDF and attach a straight scrap piece of wood to one side of it. Notice that it is angled in from one edge slightly. Next, I place my top or back on the piece and overhang it a skosh more on the neck end, like I show here. Mark both ends of the piece where it hits the scrap piece that is attached to the workboard. Use a straight edge to connect these marks. Notice how the line is angled. The two pieces are then folded up and taped together on the edge that is going to be joined. I then go to the bandsaw and cut off the taper that I drew on the edge of the piece. If there is any doubt that the top or back is not wide enough, then check it with a template before cutting off the tapered edge. You don't want any unpleasant surprises after the cut has been made. The tapered edge you just cut now needs to be joined so that it is straight. You can use the shooting board and plane for this. Now unfold the two pieces and place them on the workboard so that they are together at the center. Attach the other straight scrap piece to the workboard so that it is tied against the other side of the top or back. Since the top or back is now tapered on the edges, it clamps itself as you push it into the workboard. Placing a piece of wax paper or parchment paper under the pieces to be glued will keep them from getting glued to the workboard. Apply glue to the edges to be joined and place it back on the workboard, pushing it into the board until sufficient clamping pressure is applied to glue the pieces together. If you decide to use a center strip, then glue that in at this time. 
If you prepare the joint properly, only minimal pressure is needed. If the piece starts to lift up under the pressure, then apply some weight to the top. Always remove one of the scrap pieces before removing the weight though. If you leave the joint offset slightly when gluing, you will be able to find the center line easily. This comes in handy when not using a center strip. After appropriate dry time, you can remove the top or back from the workboard and continue building your guitar. So, the next time you need to join two pieces of wood together, save the bullets for the shooting range and use your shooting board to help you get the perfect joint on your guitar top or back.